for a long time have been wanting to add nebulas inside Solar Rogue, but exactly how to do it has been actually quite a bit of a challenge. Now first I have to explain what I mean by nebulas. In my mind they would be some kind of cloud shaped thing that would spread all over the level and if the player's ships gets inside one of those clouds then he would get some kind of side effects like maybe his scanner range is reduced or maybe he takes damage from time to time. I think it adds a lot to the game Plus, since it's spreading all over the level, it's a really nice way to add some visual interest inside the level. Speaking of which, since it's going to spread all over the level, I figured it needs to at least look kind of good. I mean, I'm no artist, but I figured it should look good-ish. But honestly, I had absolutely no idea how I was going to pull that off. So I did what I always do, I started looking at some reference that might give me some inspiration. The first thing I thought of is of course nebulas inside FTL, but uh, honestly I think they're a little bit too fluffy for my taste, but it was a good reference. So I started looking at, you know, real world nebula, I took a bunch of screenshots, I saved a bunch of images of clouds and smoke, anything that might remind me of a nebula, and I started taking all of those pictures and images and putting them inside a folder so that I can analyze them in detail later. And as I was playing with my references and trying different color schemes and trying my hand at drawing something that might look like a nebula, I started wondering how can I make these blob dynamic? How can I shape this so that it spreads over my level? And I started thinking maybe I can use tile maps in Godot to try to draw nebulas by hand using the tile system. And I figured if I can even make it into an auto tile system, I can just paint it any way I want and then the auto tile system will make sure that the holes look like holes and that corners look like corners and all of this. Now, the way you create tile map in Godot is a little bit weird. The way I do it is that first I import my texture inside a new scene as a sprite then in the menus I can go and do convert to tile set and I can save this scene as a tile set resource. And once I have this, I can go create a new scene with a tile map node and in this tile map nodes property I can assign it the tile set I just exported. And once you've done that, you can go inside the tile set from your tile map and then you can start editing the properties of the tile set. The main important one is editing the a bit mask for auto tiling and setting the auto tile bit mask mode for telling Godot how to handle the auto tiling. But then once you have that, you can start painting over your tile map to draw whatever you want. And to test my theory that I could use that for my nebulas, I just downloaded whatever tile set I could find on the internet and then I replaced the thing with some basic colors and a bit of transparency so that I could just test out painting some random shapes that might look kind of what I had in mind. And I thought it looked pretty alright and it looked like it might work, but while I was kind of happy with the way the borders were looking, I tried different things to draw stuff in the center, but I never could make it look quite good. You see, the problem is that usually when you use tile map, you're going to have a lot of details on the sides, on the corners, like say on the platformer, but where you have stuff that repeats itself, usually people will use uh, kind of like plain colors because otherwise it's very obvious that the tile map is just repeating itself. Now you can add variation by having the same tile multiple time in your level. So for example, if you had grass, you could have different types of middle grass so that when you're painting a big plane or something, you would have stuff that looks a little bit different. But in my case, I couldn't figure out how to make it work really well. So I went back to the drawing board and I started looking at how other games create more dynamic stuff like fogs and smoke and stuff like that. And I stumbled on a gunky tutorial of how he added some smoke effect inside his game by using a shader with um, fractal brownian noise algorithm or FBM. 
But in Gonki's tutorial, he just puts it on the plane and it's just the whole plane that's this color. But I didn't know how I could shape this plane or this mesh into the shape I wanted. Then I realized maybe I can combine the tile map and the shader to create what I want. Because my big problem was that I couldn't figure out how to pass the shape I want to the shader so that it can create the fractal Brownian noise. But if I have the tile map, the texture of the tile map will tell me if this is a corner or an edge or if there's some alpha transparency or something like that. And then the algorithm can just choose the color based on the fractal noise. So I tried implementing that, fiddling a bit with the colors, and yeah, in the end, I think it looks pretty good. But I actually did this nearly a year ago. And the reason I haven't made any progress since then is because a year ago, when I was at good old version 3.1 or 3.2.0, the tile map's performance was absolutely horrendous on mobile because there was no batching, so a tile map could generate thousands of draw codes which completely destroyed performance even on high-end mobile devices. So I knew batching was coming, so I decided that it wasn't worth the effort to try to implement it or fix it in another way, so I kind of tabled this for now. But now that batching is here in 3.3 and it performance seems to have improved, I figured I should revisit it and that's why recently I've been working on it again. Still, there was a lot of um, technical challenges awaiting me, but I think I'm going to keep this for the next episode where I'll go more into the technical challenges of generating these tile map dynamically. So stay tuned for next week and until then, see you all in my next episode. Bye!